our lesson today is entitled Living in Faith on this Palm Sunday. The background passage is Acts chapter 6, and the lesson passage is Acts chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. A unified topic is when the world is against you. Lesson text divided into three parts. The spreading of the word, Acts 6, 7 through 8. Stephen faces opposition and arrest, Acts chapter 6, 9 through 12. And third part, Stephen before the Sanhedrin, Acts chapter 6, 13 through 15. Our main thought is Acts 6, 9, and 10. It says, some stood up and argued against, argued with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Our unifying principle, people who are falsely accused and persecuted often feel the whole world is against them. What sustains us in the face of injustice and persecution the testimony of Stevens encourages us to be obedient to the faith inspired by the grace, power, and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Our lesson aim is that Christians are to consider the ways that Stephen was strengthened when faced with false accusations and persecutions. The account of Stevens reassures Christians that the Lord is with us even in the face of unwarranted persecution. Now, life aim, the so Christians are to acknowledge ways that the love of Christ and the Holy Spirit encourage and strengthen our faith. As believers, we must not fail to trust in and be faithful to the world, which guides our lives. Since Christians live according to the grace of God, we must not be in a state of silence in the manner by which the love of Jesus strengthens our walk in the faith. So this fourth Sunday, our lesson comes out of the book of Acts, or Acts of the Apostles. It is a history of the first century church. And so basically, it is a book of beginnings for we see the empowerment and filling of the church and the beginning of the New Testament ministry work. And this book, it's a sequel to the Gospel of Luke, since both books are written by Luke, and Acts basically picks up where Luke leaves off. Both have the same author. Acts continues the history of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in the first century church. In Acts, we see Jesus' works performed through the Holy Spirit, whom came to dwell within believers on the day of Pentecost. And the events in the entire book of Acts covers about 34 years. So in chapter 6, we, this is after the day of, of Pentecost, where numerous miracles and works have been performed. And it says here in verse 6, starting verse 7, chapter 6, verse 7, it says that, And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So here we see the spread of the, of the early church. As the word of God spread, so did the number of disciples and even priests who would have been bitter enemies also began following Christ. And this is a miracle in and of itself, that these priests who had all these traditions and were so keeping to the law, who, who would, and many of whom were doing Christ would see him as an enemy, are now following him. And we see here the appearance of Stephen. His name means crown, and Stephen was one of the first deacons of the church. 
as we read early in, in chapter 6, and let me read the first couple of verses. We'll see how deacons came about in chapter 6, starting at verse 1. It says that in those days, when a number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a mumbling of the Greeks against the Hebrews because the widows were neglected in the daily ministrations. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. So the caring of widows. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So we see that, that issue arose in the church. The widows aren't being cared for. Uh, the, the disciples said, well, well, we need to devote ourselves to prayer and ministry. We need to, we need to find some men to, to handle this, to, to be the extension of the church itself. So seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Now Stephen was one of them, along with Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas. He was the first set of these deacons. So we don't know a whole lot about Stephen. But we do know that he was a man of honest rapport, so he had a good reputation. He was full of the Holy Ghost and, and wisdom. We at least know that of him. And so Stephen, we see the appearance of Stephen, who, as you read on, will become one of the first martyrs the church. So, so even though, so Stephen, and let me read on, a man of our support full of the Holy Ghost. So by saying that he is full of the Holy Ghost and, and wisdom also means that he feared God because Proverbs 9 and 10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So he's a man that feared God filled with the Holy Ghost, and had a good reputation amongst people. And it is, people will see your reputation before and determine whether or not you have anything worthy of saying or, or they even deciding to listen to you. So in 1 Peter 2 and 12, this is about, about an honest report, What's written here is, 1 Peter 2 and 12 says, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. How many people have stayed away from church, left the church because a church leader got caught up in some sort of misdeeds or, or improper conduct. Your reputation and your dealings is really like what your first ministry. Before they want to hear about God and Jesus, they first, they first see who you are, what is your character. So when the, when the first address says, find these seven men, no, we see saying, honest report. They have to be honorable people, honorable men. And then, and if they're honorable, they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom. So this is the type of man that Stephen was. And as we read on, verse 9 says, Stephen, full of faith and power. Uh, verse 8, sorry, let me read verse 8 again. It says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, said that he did great wonders and miracles 
among the people. And we see here a fulfilling of scripture where Jesus says that his disciples, his followers, will do greater things than him. John 14 and 12, when Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. So even though we don't know the exact details of the wonders and miracles that he performed, we know these wonders and miracles were indeed performed, showing the power of the Holy Spirit working through believers, and here specifically Stephen. So we see the spread of the word of God. We got the appearance of Deacon Stephen, full of grace and power, and through the power of the Holy Spirit being done through him, wonders and miracles. Any comments before I move on? I knew him. And finally, the last time he asked me, he said, 
Brother Gavin, he said, give me an answer. Whether it's yes or no. And that was the fifth Sunday of November, 1986. You know when I gave them an answer? The first Sunday of March, 1988. <laughs> because I knew we. And I, and I, and I, and I was in the city, and I know a lot of the deacons who were paroled and rolled the and knew they liked that. They were and, I, and I know just by knowing the word of God, that's not the role. And I start praying to God and asking God, am I qualified for this position? And I'll tell anybody, God dealt with me. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about a miserable feeling, it's when God dealing with you and you can't rest. <laughs> I might have shared this year before. Every morning between 2 and 4 o'clock, I was just a wide awake as I am right now. And one time, I can go to sleep. Now it's time to get up and go to work. <laughs> and after I went in this office the first Sunday of March 1988 and told them I was going to train for deacon, I've been sleeping comfortable ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, God dealt with me. That third That's night, it. God showed me in the dream, showed me the pits of hell, showed me fire. And y'all think Jim Brown was dancing, some of these others got foot boots. I was dancing, I woke up. And I woke up with such a thing, my wife woke up to wash all I was pet. Or wash down his sweat. <clears throat> and I went to church that Sunday. I was president of the usher over that time. I was sitting on the back seat with the usher. One time the third one. Spoke to me again. What are you waiting for? And we went downstairs. I was a trustee. Went downstairs in the late dark of West Beach from St. Pete. She used to always go to a place that by me. She would call me home. I went to that table that Sunday morning. I'm sharing this with y'all because I know how God works and I know what he did for me. And I went to that table that Sunday and I picked up some money in the account and the voice made the last morning. I dropped the money, turned around, went to knock on the pastor. He said, come here. I said, where am I going to I've been at peace ever since. We're seeing this in this lesson, and and you know, I tell you, God is God's persistent. Yeah. <laughs> it, he'll stay on. I mean, He's God. He's eternal. We're the ones that are limited by time. But but I tell you what, when God calls you, He's already empowered you to do what He's called you to do. Yeah, and He'll prepare you. And and so many times we've. We forget the preparation. I know we're going to start a little bit. Uh -huh. That just, that even though God called you, it doesn't mean you're supposed to run out right now. You also need to be prepared mm -hmm. and taught and trained and go out. I mean, you, know, you, did, you went to school. You didn't go to school to be a pastor. You went to school to be a deacon. <laughs> but they ain't got no deacon degrees. So, <laughs> yeah. So, because part of a deacon is to be apt to teach. And so... So, yeah, but, you know, seven men. One of those seven men. And, and just like you said about preparation, as we begin Holy Week today, 
Yeah. Jesus did preparation before he went to the cross. Yeah. The day of Palm Sunday, you read what he did on Monday when he went back into the uh, temple, what he did on Tuesday. What did he do? Wait, the scripture yeah. said what? He did it in nothing. He was preparing, <laughs> making preparation to go to the cross for Friday. So uh, preparation, but we just want to jump up and think we can do something without being prepared. <laughs> but we need to be prepared, especially when it comes to God's house. Yeah. We're going to jump and everything. We prepare for everything lose, else. Like we mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, they're going to turn you loose out there with a trike and trailer because you got your, just got out of school with your CDL license, give you a, a trike worth $150,000, a trailer worth $100,000, and $5,000, $500 worth of goods, <laughs> and tell you go. No, you got to be trained. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to God's house, we think we can just jump up and do it any kind of way. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 no. I'm against it. No, you you have to be a certain way. As, as we see here, arms report for the Holy Spirit, and I'm saying and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And as I know here, deacon. Before I move on, is church specific. Now, maybe correct on this. I, I've and I've seen this deacons from another church visit and they introduce themselves as deacon such and such without a specificity of where you're a deacon at. Because mm -hmm. you wouldn't have a pastor, like the pastor of neither wouldn't go in to another say, well, I'm pastor such and such no. without be, saying specifically, I'm pastor at Ebenezer. Right. <laughs> so, but you, you're a deacon over there, you're not a deacon here. That's right. <laughs> Oh, and, yeah. and they are only deacon of that church. Yeah. It is up to another church to whether they recognize you as one or not. Mm -hmm. But out of the courtesy. Yeah. And you go, like you say, I would go and say, I'm a deacon from, uh, you know, so and so. I'm a deacon in Ebenezer. And we need to understand not at Ebenezer, in Ebenezer. So yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that a couple of times. And, I'm a, and, and it, it troubles me. It's like, I'm deacon. It's like, well, you're not deacon here. <laughs> Just be specific. <laughs> But, but moving on, verse 9 says, Although Stephen was an honorable man, full of the Holy Spirit, doing all these signs and wonders, there were people that had issue with him. And I tell you, it doesn't matter how good you are, people will find a reason to not like you. <laughs> That's why you can't please people. You, you get so stressed out. <laughs> But it says here in verse 9, Then there arose certain of the Sanhedrin, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Sheridans and Alexandrians, and of them of Sicilia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they... Then they they stubborn men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes and came unto them <coughs> and caught him and brought him to the council. Now, the New Revised Standard Version for verse uh, 11 says, then they secretly instigated some men to say we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. So so the synagogue of the free men were Jews that were once caught captive by Romans and then set free. They set up a synagogue there and scripture tells that these men basically tried to debate Stephen but they couldn't withstand the wisdom. In other words, they, they, they couldn't shut down anything he was saying. So since they could not discredit the message, they tried to discredit the messenger. And this is a common tactic for those who try to discredit wisdom. Today we will call it being canceled. They tried, they, they tried to cancel Stephen. <laughs> and, and, but but here, here we see 
what's happening to Stephen, and, and we don't see what happens to Stephen, mirrors what happens to Jesus and the prophets before him. So if we turn to Luke chapter 6, Turn to Luke chapter 6, real quick. Luke chapter 6 and verse 22. And it reads, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they should separate you from their company, then we don't want anything to do with you, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Not just for any reason, but for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. So you don't rejoice because people hate you, but you have a reward in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So Jesus is saying they hated you, they hated the prophets before you. They didn't want nothing to do with you. They spoke evil of you just like the prophets. So, so even in the Old Testament, the prophet people going, that Isaiah, I can't stand him. He be going out just telling everybody's business, talking about what thus says the Lord. Man, I can't, I can't stand this. There are people that hated Jesus. Jesus, I can't stand it. Do you know that he just healed seven lepers on a Sabbath? Of all days, the Sabbath? And the day before he killed like 500 pigs, somebody was casting out demons. What does he think he's doing? Who does he think he is? The son of God? <laughs> so, so doing good works. Yeah. People are being healed. <laughs> and and they, they, they still can't, they can't stand him. They hated the prophets. They hated Jesus. They hated, they hated Stephen. And as children of God, the world will hate us too because we are speaking contrary to the world's thoughts and actions because, because we, we are moved and motivated by the kingdom of God and it is God's word that is our final authority and our guide and the, the further we move along in time the, the further and further away the world will move away from scripture and scriptural values we're seeing this here so we're seeing these people verse 11 says that they got men and said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Now, that's a good way to tell a lie. I heard, I heard. Now what they don't tell you is that they heard it from themselves. I heard that, he, that this man, Stephen, man, he's speaking against Moses and against God. It says that, and they stirred up the people this basically just like gaslighting people. So when, 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 when gaslighting is basically telling a lie with no kind of evidence, but the sole purpose is just to get your emotions riled up. Mm -hmm. So that you're so riled up in the emotion that you're ignoring the message. You have Stephen here doing wonders and miracles but you have, the, you have those who are against him going, he's speaking against Moses and God. It's all a distraction. That, and that's basically what gaslighting is all about. So let's turn to, turn to Mark chapter 3. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to kind of skip around a little bit. Turn to Mark chapter 3. So we've seen this done with Jesus. Mark chapter 3, I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Uh, verse 1 says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, 
to save life or to kill, but they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. So we have a, we have a healing. Uh, skip to verse 10, 11 a little bit. It says here, for he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to be touched, to touch him as many has had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fall down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he strictly charged them that they should not take, make him known. All right, so, so we have healing, we have casting out demons. Skip to verse 22 and 23. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils cast he out devils. So we have healing, we have casting out demons, and he, here we have the scribes gaslighting. He's the devil. What a, a distraction. He... So they would rather call Jesus a devil <laughs> than just say, maybe he's the son of God. Maybe he's the Messiah we've been looking for this whole time. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. what's happening to Stephen is what's happening to Jesus. So you have this gaslighting of people. And going back to Acts chapter 6, says that they, they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and the God. Mm -hmm. And they stirred up the people, as well as the elders and the scribes, that they suddenly confronted him and seized him and brought him before the council. All because there was some lies and rumors. So going to verse 13, it says that they set up false witnesses who said this man never stopped saying things against the holy place and the law. And that's the New Revised Standard Version. So we have lies, we have, and guess what? People lied on Jesus. He's re it's the same treatment from man doing the same thing that Jesus did. So we Sometimes we want to, and, and I, I probably contribute this to the prosperity gospel, my, one of my complaints about it. We try to make being a Christian all glamorous and wonderful and perfect, which on this side of life is not the case. If you're going to follow Christ, you're going to go through everything Christ went through. So, so Jesus had power. He had wisdom, he had the word of God. He did a lot of great, wonderful, uh, great, wonderful things and miracles, but he also was persecuted. He was also lied on. He was, he, he, people, he was hated just because of the good he did. So guess what? Being, being a Christian is not glamorous on this side. <laughs> and I hear him say that because, like I read earlier, the reward is in heaven. Right now, we live in a sinful, corrupt world. That means folk will do evil and pop and prosper <laughs> in this world. So, so we're going to follow Christ. We got to go through. We have to go through everything he went through, including death and resurrection. <laughs> Any questions or comments from him? They had that, that big 
mom for people. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's saying here. And good people, some of those people, good people, <laughs> but what Bishop just said there, they got caught up in what? Emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's your emotion? Mm -hmm. Good people, if someone come and, and whisper, what you think about? And they say, you, you, you know, you just go into the crowd. Mm -hmm. And you hear a lot of these people say that. How in the world did I do this? I just went there, and, and they got no, I'm up here riding. I'm throwing these things. I'm hurting people. This is not my dad. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you have, you have a lot of those people, right, that's in jail right now, how in the world mm, did yeah. I get myself caught up in this? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Witnesses. To come and speak falsely against him. Mm -hmm. so Stephen is just a repeat that you were saying of what Jesus went through. Mm -hmm. Speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. But when they come up against him, then his wisdom and spirit, that's mm -hmm. what they couldn't stand. Because mm -hmm. if you read on in all the way up to verse uh, the chapter 8, he told them about what they had done. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't take that. He, he was cutting them to the heart with the truth. Mm -hmm. And most of them, the truth will hurt, mm. but in the long run, it's helpful. Mm. It's helpful. And this is what Stephen would do with them. And then they come before the council. Now this council, we talk about that's the Sanhedrin council, mm. which consists of seven. And they was like the Supreme Court. Mm. Look at our Supreme Court. <laughs> huh? Look how corrupt they are. Mm. So we see what's been happening in the first century it's still going on today, but it's more relevant. The right that is mm -hmm. happening right before our face. Yeah. yeah, the devil has no new tricks. <laughs> and they accuse Jesus when he said he cares about him. They said people do it all by the power of Bell to the devil. That's the devil. Mm -hmm. They say he didn't have no power. <laughs> it was the yeah. devil. So that's what they're trying to trap him. So we need to be, uh, be have our mind fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Winnie just said a lot of them now, they regret. They lost their family, their home, job, everything. Now they're locked up in jail. What, 45? Mm -hmm. Get caught up in the yeah. bush. And she said, somebody bring this truck around. This old folks, my mama, I'm just getting up say, you watch that dog, that bring a bone, you want to carry one back. <laughs> uh, and we have to be careful. The people will say something. I say something to Sister Shannon about Deacon Kyle. And then she tells Deacon Kyle. But she want to say something about Deacon Kyle too. But when it get to Deacon Kyle, what I say, plus what she wanted to say, <laughs> but it's all going to be what I say. <laughs> so we have to run, and like Sister Wendell said, we have to run quickly. That's all you always hear me say. And I'm a firm believer of that. When you have meetings and stuff like that, if it's not done in the meeting, if it's outside, it doesn't mean nothing to me. It's obsolete. You can't stand up and be man or woman enough to speak. We mm -hmm. all have our opinions. Mm -hmm. We don't have to agree with it, but you have the right to voice your opinion. And then we do like what Jesus would do in Matthew uh, chapter 18. We can, we can disagree, but we can disagree in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. But we want to run away because some of us think that our way is only the right way. All of us can be wrong, but none of us is perfect. Mm -hmm. I've always said, I don't mind being criticized, but I've always said, let it be constructive. Mm -hmm. Don't come to me telling me, well, William, you should have done this or that. Well, how do I don't know. But then you got a problem. If you don't know, you don't run out and do it right or wrong. It's just because you don't like the way it's being done. Mm -hmm. And I speak by what James writes in his epistle, especially when it comes to, to us believers, the, 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 the kingdom of God. James, so where do stripes come from? It comes from within. Mm -hmm. We pick it up and take it out there. And right now, I've heard more things going around, man, and I'll leave this about what's going on in the and the people don't even live with it. So we must know. So where do we get it from? It's from somebody in here taking it out there. Mm -hmm. And we might as well face the fact. Mm -hmm. And this is all the lesson tell. Let's be firm. Mm -hmm. And let's speak. We can, we, can, we can speak and be disagreeable, but let's do it in the spirit of love. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and stay, like I said, stay away from the secret meetings. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, th these lies came about in secret. Mm -hmm. Y'all got together, planned this out. Okay, yeah. we're gonna say this. And I said, we all have to realize that as people, we are emotional. And we can be easily, we, you just have to be honest with yourself. I can be manipulated by <laughs> my emotions. Yeah. And I have to be on guard and watch out. Mm -hmm. So even if I hear someone say, well, well, I heard, I hear it with the understanding that oftentimes as people, we do not recollect events word for word what people say. Oftentimes what they're recounting is filtered through their own emotions, their own opinions about that person. So you, you, got, you got to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> you got to understand you're hearing somebody's interpretation of what they heard. And, and so, if, and all of it can be helpful if, if you're at the meeting yourself. <laughs> that way, because something might stand out to you that might not stand out to that person and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't go off, so don't go off of what somebody's telling you. <laughs> Even if they're well mean, don't, don't, don't go off it because just be there. We know when the meetings are, be at the meetings, stay away from the secret meetings, <laughs> and, and, and love each other, express our own opinions, and you know, you know, keep it moving. No, no one is, is, is you know, we're not putting a pin somewhere out there. I'm at a point where I do not expect someone to agree and comply with what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was teenage version of me. Even if I did the idea, it was great. <laughs> but grow up and mature, you put it out there, Hey, may may not go anywhere, but but love each other and and be in peace, and and it puts us all when we're out of the secrets, it puts us all in one accord when we're all at the meeting, we're all and when we're here and studying together, we're getting on one accord with God's word. We don't see the one accord here. We see two different accords. We see Stephen, and we see everybody else. Elder. And, and, and we're seeing all of this. And let me read verses 14, 15. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So even though there were these false accusations in his plot, we see Stephen said that his, his face had the face, his consonants changed to one of peace, not of fearful and worry, but of peace. And, and uh, Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he had God's peace through all of this. And if you, if you read on the chapter six and into seven, you will see that, that there's such a, a ruckus and a rise that, mm -hmm. that Stephen is, is stoned. Mm -hmm. He becomes the first martyr. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I guess I can say with this first story that if you wanna be a deacon, you should be prepared to die. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we see even in his death, he was at peace, yeah. Yeah. and and doing all of this, and I, I'll conclude. Even though Stephen's life and ministry, as far as what was coming to an end, Paul, Saul, or Paul, mm -hmm. was at this execution, holding, holding the garments, <laughs> and you no, know, Paul didn't start ministry right then. <laughs> he had his own path and his own story and meeting with Jesus. But, but it's, a way, it's like saying that the torch was already passed on to the next so that the word of God would continue to spread by way of Paul and his ministry journeys. So this is the story of Stephen and living by faith, a man who was faithful unto death. <laughs> and as we see here, as Stephen was faithful and God's with him, that we should, ought to do the same thing. So thank you and God bless you.